Hello, and welcome to Jazz Guitar, Chord Melody, Part 15. Hi, this is Mike Hayes, and just a quick reminder before we get started. If this is the first video you've seen in this series, there's a link in the description below to all the previous Jazz Guitar Chord Melody videos. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll be notified just as soon as the latest video is available. We're going to begin this session by adding some new colours to our musical palette. And we're going to do this by adding different types of intervals. Now an interval is a very important word. We use the word interval to measure the distance between one note and another. Now there's a number of different types of intervals, and just to clarify things, in this session we'll be referring to diatonic intervals. And that simply means only notes from the one key. And the key we'll be referring to is the key of G. Now initially, intervals can be quite tricky to get your head around, but once you get the concept, it's really quite easy. The main thing to keep in mind is that an interval is a system of measurement for a musician. And the way we measure the intervals is from the lowest note to the highest note very similar to measuring from the floor of a room to the ceiling. We'll begin by playing the G major scale, and we're going to play this G major scale in a linear fashion. That means we're going to play it along the length of the string. Let's have a listen. The first interval we're going to listen to and practice is the interval of a third. This means we're going to add a harmony note above each note of our G scale. The harmony note will be three notes higher than our original scale tone. On the screen you will see a two octave G major scale. Now if we were to pick up that scale from the third note, that's from the note B, and layer that new scale over our original scale, like this, we would end up with the G major scale harmonized in thirds. And now here's how that would look on the guitar. The red notes are the original notes of the G major scale, and the blue notes are the harmony notes a third higher. Now that we know how to create a harmony in thirds, let's have a listen to what thirds sound like on the guitar. I'm sure you've heard that sound before. Being able to harmonize a melody in thirds is a very useful colour for our arranging project. The next interval we're going to practice and add to our ever-growing sonic resources is the interval of a sixth. It's the same process that we just went through for the thirds. We start with the G major scale and then layer the scale over itself this time at an interval of a sixth. Here's how that looks. Here's the G major scale, and now we'll layer that scale with notes that are a sixth above the original notes. And here's how it looks on the guitar. Again, the notes in red are the original notes in the G major scale, and the blue notes are the harmony notes a sixth above. Let's have a listen to how that sounds.
Once again, I'm sure you've heard that sound. Now we're going to add one more interval to our collection. And this time it's going to be the interval of a tenth. Now this sounds tricky, but what it really is, is our old friend, the interval of a third, with the top note moved up an octave. So back to our G scale. Now we'll add the third above. And now we'll move that up an octave. Here's how that would look on the guitar. And now let's take a listen to how an interval of a tenth sounds. So by now you're probably getting the idea that the larger the number of the interval, the more space you create in the harmony. So if you wanted to get a close or a tight sound in your harmony, a third would be a good idea. On the other hand, if you wanted to create more space in your arrangement, a tenth would be a good choice. Now before we go on, now would be a good time to do a review of all our musical resources that we have so far. As far as creating a harmony from a given melody, we have two approaches that we've been using so far when we're creating a chord melody arrangement. We have the major sixth diminished approach. We also know about the passing chord way of stylizing a piece of music. And now we can add the concept of harmonizing a melody in thirds, sixths or tenths. And now with these new musical resources under our belt, let's head back to our arrangement work that we're doing with the tune Deck the Hall. So now I'm going to view this tune as if we were playing it with an orchestra or a big band, where we had a lot of different resources, a lot of different instruments that we could choose from, and I'm going to take this idea across to this tune and the way we play it on the guitar. In our previous session, we worked out that we were going to use major sixth diminished style harmonization for bars one and two. And now what I'm going to suggest here is that even though we could continue that style of harmonization, let's have a listen to how the third bar would sound played in thirds. Now we could continue to use that interval of a third for the fourth bar as well. But what I'm going to do here is just mix it up a little bit. As you can hear, I stopped one note short of completing that third bar. What I'm going to do there on that A note the last note in the third bar, I'm going to switch intervals. I'm going to change to an interval of a sixth, and I'm going to play that on the A note, and then I'm going to continue using the interval of a sixth in the next bar, on the G and the F sharp. Then when I get to the G, I'm going to use an interval of a fourth. So I'm thinking in terms of phrasing. I'm playing a little section, in thirds, and then I'm playing another section, like a call and response or a question and answer, I'm changing intervals to add variety and also that element of surprise. Let's have a listen to that fourth bar. Remember, we're starting on the A note in bar three. Okay, let's have a listen to the third and fourth bar. Let's have a listen to the first four bars so we can get an idea of where this is all going. Once 
what I suggest you do is try some of these new intervals in your own arrangements. You could even go back to things like the Ode to Joy, that piece we worked on a couple of sessions ago, and try some of the intervals there. Play a certain section in thirds, or another part of it in sixths, just to see how it all sounds and what you prefer. So that's where we'll leave it for this session. We'll develop some of these ideas further in the next session. So don't forget if you've got any questions or comments to leave them in the comments section below the video. And I look forward to catching up with you again next time. Bye for now.